couple days ago, I was browsing the internet and I stumbled onto one of those lists, those top 10 best gifts for your loved one sort of things. So I was looking through it and one of the items on the list was a book for analyzing your dreams. And it sounds like that'd be a cool gift, but what if you happen to be one of those people that never dreams? I've read that everybody has dreams at some point during their sleep, but that some people are better than others at remembering what they dreamt of the night before. But even when I try my hardest to remember what I was dreaming about, I'm lucky if I can recall even one or two dreams in the span of a month. And this isn't a recent thing either. It all started sometime when I was still in my early teens. I'd go to sleep, and whenever I woke up, my mind would be blank. And it bothered me the first couple of days, but when it kept happening for an entire week, I sat down at my desk and started thinking of some workaround to my dreamless situation. I came to the conclusion that if my subconscious wasn't providing me with any dreams when I slept, then the only solution was to make up my own dreams. So that night, I got into bed, and when I felt myself starting to get sleepy, I began to ask myself, what would be a cool thing to dream about if I hadn't just lost the ability to do so a week ago, or at least remember any of them? So my mind starts wandering, and one second I'm at the mall, then I'm at some paintball place, and then somehow I end up at my school holding a stack of cakes in my arms. So I start walking down some stairs holding my cakes, and as I'm looking at signs that are announcing a bake sale that's going on, I take another step, and I can't feel anything underneath me anymore. So my foot slips, and as I fall forwards, all the cakes fly out of my hands. I regain my balance, and moments before the cakes land face down on the floor, I strike a pose. I squint my eyes and I put my hands in front of my face, and I realize that I have the power to stop time. I walk over to the cakes and they remain motionless in the air, stuck in time. I bend down and I grab a cake that's just inches away from touching the dirty school floor. So I grab all the other cakes and I stack them up in my arms again. I put them all down, I strike my pose, and I resume time. I get to my classroom and everyone sees me come in. They all celebrate when they see the cakes I brought with me and the bake sale is a success. The teacher tells me that in honor of my awesome cake bringing ability, I've earned a ticket to go see a free movie. She gives me the ticket and I'm waving it around the class, happy with how everything turned out. And that's when I wake up. The sun's shining and it's the morning of the next day. I jump out of bed and I'm amazed that the experiment was a total success. I go up to my bathroom mirror and I stare at myself, excited and scared at the fact that I've now gained control over my dreams. Because the moment in between the time I fell asleep and the time I woke up the next morning felt like I was waking up from a coma. So instead of counting sheep as I drifted off into the void, I'd replace my dreams with whatever came out of my imagination. Every night after that, I'd try out different scenarios to play out in my head before I fell asleep, and I'd call them non-dreams. I tried having a non-dream where I could fly around high above the city, but the heights made me uncomfortable, so I stopped trying to have that non-dream after that one time. I tried having one where I find a huge trash can full of money, but by the time I managed to drag it back to my house, I was already falling asleep. So in the end, my favorite non-dream, the one that worked out the best for me, and the one that I always kept coming back to, was the time freeze. I'd non-dream that I'm in math class and the teacher announces he's got a surprise quiz for us that's worth 30% of our final grade. The teacher slaps the test sheet on my desk, I look over all the questions and realize I'm fucked. I wait around a while until I see the smartest kid in the class is finished with her quiz. She gets up to go turn it into the teacher and then when nobody's looking, I strike my time freeze pose. I get out of my seat and I walk over to where the smart kid is frozen, about to hand her paper in. I grab the paper out of her hand and I go back to my desk and I copy all her answers. I walk back, put the paper back in her hand and then I sit at my desk and I unfreeze time. I wait around until a few of the other kids have turned in their quiz and then I go and give the teacher mine. I sit back down in my seat feeling pleased with myself and then I wake up. So throughout the years I kept having non-dreams involving my time freeze technique. And in the beginning they were all separate events or situations. But as the years went by they all became interrelated and canonical. Any new time freeze skills I learned in one non-dream would carry over onto the next one. Like I remember one time I was surfing on top of a bullet train that was going at high speed. And I wanted to freeze time to get off safely. But the force of the wind wasn't letting me do my time freeze pose. So I tumbled off of the train and I broke both of my legs. So the next night as I was going to sleep I imagined myself in a training montage learning how to freeze time using only my mind. After my training, I never had to do my original pose again, and I managed to avoid a lot of dangerous situations because of that. One thing I noticed looking back on it is how much of an influence my day-to-day -day life had on how I chose to use my time freeze before going to sleep. In my angsty early teenage years, I froze time to beat up a lot of people. If a bully did something to me that day in school, I'd revisit that moment in my non-dreams, and I'd freeze time to beat the shit out of him, or I'd beat up a teacher that gave me a bad grade, and things like that. 
Afterwards, in my late teens, whenever a new video game console came out and I didn't have the money to buy it, I'd have a non-dream where I walk over to a video game store and the building has a security camera on the outside. So I start walking past the building and when I know that I'm in front of the security camera, I freeze time. I take a roll of white tape out of my pocket and I mark the position my feet were in when I froze time. I go to a nearby bush where I'd left a huge suitcase and I walk into the store with it. I grab the console that I want and a ton of video games and then I walk out with my full suitcase. I make my way back to my house and I leave my suitcase in my room and then I walk back to the store. I position my feet onto the tape markers and I put the strips of tape back in my pocket to get rid of any evidence. I unfreeze time and I continue to walk past the security camera and then I make my way back home to play my new games. Or after college when I was upset because I'd gotten pretty overweight, I went into a training montage again and I learned a technique I call the time bubble. I freeze time just like I normally do, but I also make a time bubble appear around me. So although time is frozen, while I'm inside of that bubble, time passes just like normal. So I go into that bubble and I drink kale shakes and I eat grilled chicken and brown rice and I do a ton of crunches and weights and push-ups for six straight months. And after those six months have passed, I dissolve the time bubble. I unfreeze time and in the blink of an eye, I've gone from being overweight to being fit and healthy. Recently, I've been excited because EVO is coming up in July. EVO is the biggest fighting game tournament of the year, and all the top fighting game players show up to compete. So I've been perfecting a new technique where I'm able to reverse time, and I've been non-dreaming about a situation where I enter the tournament as a no-name nobody, and I start using my time reversal during my matches. So every time my opponent hits me, I reverse time and I try a different strategy to change the outcome. It's kind of like when you play a game on an emulator, and you have save states and load states. So if I get hit, I just reload the state and try something else to see if that time I don't get hit. So I start advancing through the brackets, and James Chen and Ultra David are talking about how I came out of nowhere, and for the first time ever in a fighting game tournament, nobody's managed to hit me even once. With the time reversal, I managed to blow past all the top fighting game players. I annihilate Alex Valle with a double perfect. I tell Pretty Ricky that he has to buy me a drink if I beat him with an ultra move at the end of every round, and it happens just like I said it would. Justin Wong, Mike Ross, PR Balrog, they're no match for the mysterious dude that hasn't been hit all tournament long. So I end up winning the tournament, and when I'm on stage with my prize money and my trophy, I announce that I'm retiring from the fighting game scene, and that I plan to donate all the money to the various people that stream fighting game tournaments. And then I wake up. So if you're like me and you can't remember your dreams, I suggest you just start making up your own. I'm coming up to 15 years that I've been doing my time freeze thing, and my usages for it are constantly evolving. Maybe someday I'll regain my ability to remember my dreams, but until that happens, I'm just glad that I've found something interesting to do while I wait.